What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's design theory video we're going to be taking a look at the final element of design and one of the most important ones and that is dealing with texture. Now texture is what gives something a tactile feel meaning is it hard, is it soft, is it sharp, or is it smooth? And these are just some of the characteristics and qualities that a texture can have. So in this lesson we'll be taking a look at more varieties of texture, why they're important, and how you can use them in your own work to help you design better. Okay guys, so in today's lesson about the elements of design, we're going to be discussing texture. Now texture is everywhere around us from the, the pavement and the grass to the, the bricks on buildings and concrete and stone and everything like that. Texture is just ubiquitous. It's everywhere all the time. So here on this first page you'll see I've got a bunch of examples of different types of textures. And when you think about texture and, and what it really means, it's basically you know, making something feel tactile or realistic like you could reach out and touch it and what you'll see here is a variety of things whether it's you know sharp or soft is it hard is it rough is it smooth all of these qualities and characteristics that textures inherently possess um, and these are invaluable tools for for designers and artists because when we put textures in our work um, it, it adds something special to it it adds another layer um, of depth and, and realism that um, you know, we always strive for when we're trying to kind of simulate the world around us or even a surreal world, you know, it, it helps to, to tell the story. Um, so here, you know, you'll see things like feathers, um, ice cream, rocks, you know, cabbage, silk, all these different things that all feel and look very different. I want to show you guys some examples of texture uh, when it comes to design and, and why it's important. You know, a lot of people uh, have said over the last couple of years, oh, you know, print is dead, print is on its way out. Um, but I actually disagree with that um, because I think there's always going to be a place in the world for for print and, you know, people actually really love um, to touch and to feel things. And that's super important when you think about things like, you know, shopping and, and products and packaging design. So here you'll see a few examples of packaging design uh, with some nice looking bottles or, or boxes or bags and um, you know even things like you know shoes and flip-flops right so think about how important that stuff is to you when you go out shopping if you're looking for a new pair of shoes or if you're gonna be shopping for for clothing or anything like that I mean they all have uh, different qualities and different textures and that kinda helps to tell you you know is it is it cheap or is it well made um, is it soft is it rough Again, a lot of the characteristics that uh, textures inherently possess become increasingly important um, when it comes to consumer goods and, and product packaging. Now, here are some other ways that you know texture and, and print uh, is, is really important. And this is another example of um, you know something that I would use to say why print should always be around, why I think it will be around, um, because you have things like you know business cards and brand identity. And when you hand somebody a business card that looks like you know one of these, they're going to remember it, and they're probably going to hold on to it. Um, conversely, if you were to hand somebody you know a, a five dollar business card that you got made on Vistaprint or something like that, and nothing against Vistaprint, but like you know they kind of get a little bit of a bad rap because it's it's just cheap. The quality isn't as good, and you might get something, but I think it's better to have uh, something that is done well. Um, rather than just having something for the sake of having it. So here are some other examples like, um, you know, of, of letterpress and embossing or debossing, um, you know, foil and, and shiny reflective materials like that. Um, those are all textures. They're very tactile. You can feel it, you can touch it, and it all, you know, informs you about the quality of uh, product or uh, business card or anything like that that you're holding. Um, but other things that this could be really important for are you know things like invitations or announcements or catalogs and brochures you know it's not just magazines and newspapers it's it's products it's everything so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, a background and show you uh, different types of textures and you know not only how they are you know seen in the world around us but how they're then transferred into the world of graphic design 
So in the next part, I'm going to actually show you a couple of ways that you can use texture in your own work. So if we jump over here to Photoshop, I just have a nice stock image of this really cool and, and beautiful looking mountain scene. And it's a great shot by itself, but if we add some texture to it, we can probably make it a little bit more interesting. So here I've got this cool kind of uh, texture, which you guys can see just from looking at it, it kind of looks like a rough uh, concrete or cement uh, kind of texture, you know, and you get that from all these little details and marks and scratches. Those all uh, help to inform us about what this texture would actually feel like. And, and it almost seems like you could, you could actually reach out and touch it. So um, what I'm going to do here is first show you guys how you can overlay textures onto your images. And what I usually like to do is kind of desaturate them first. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment layer uh, button down here and choose black and white. And that will desaturate our image. And then what I will do is apply another one, this time a levels adjustment. And what I'm going to do is just kind of bring both of these uh, sliders in towards the middle to get more contrast out of it. And then we're going to punch the highlights up a little bit as well. And just really kind of crunch it in there to try and get like, you know, a black and white. And I'm actually going to move the uh, levels adjustment above the black and white adjustment layer. And you'll see how quickly that pretty much changes our texture. So the way that I did that is if you just hold down Command and Control and use your left and right brackets, you can kind of um, move the layers up and down. So, you know, the right bracket moves the layer up, the left bracket will move it down. So just by applying those two adjustment layers to our texture, you can see how different it looks already, right? But I like to desaturate it like this because I don't really want to bring any of this color information over into my image. I just want the texture. So I'm going to hold down Command E and press Command E. I'm going to uh, select all those layers and press Command E, and then that will merge them together. So from here, I'm just going to drag this into our uh, mountain image and zoom out a little bit. And I'm just going to do a free transform to kind of reduce this down a bit. And from here, what you can do is kind of uh, start scrolling through uh, the blending modes that you have. And the shortcut to do that is to hold down the shift key and use the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. And you can quickly scroll through all of your blending modes to see how it looks um, when applying it to your image. And, you know, you can see already that this, you know, adds something to it. It adds another layer and it just makes it, you know, look pretty cool. So I kind of like, you know, soft light so far, but I'm going to keep going through just so you guys can see uh, what these different blending modes do. You know, and generally, you know, your blending modes are kind of grouped together. Um, if you guys want a little bit more of an in-depth look or, you know, thumbnail previews of, of what these blending modes look like, uh, definitely check, up, check out our uh, Photoshop Starter Guide Tutorial eBook, uh, which you can still get, um, and I'll put a link for that below. It's a free eBook that I put together with a bunch of uh, kind of beginner and a little bit of intermediate uh, tutorials for you guys. So what I want to do now is make a copy of the texture. I'm going to change the blending mode back to normal. Now from here, I'm going to invert it by pressing Command I. And now you can do the same thing and kind of scroll through your blending modes again. And by inverting it, it'll create a, a different effect because it's now using the, the highlights and you know just changing things up. It's, it's the exact opposite of our initial texture that we have here. All right, but by layering these things up and making copies and inverting them and experimenting with different blending modes, you can really start to build up some pretty nice effects. And you can also, you know, change the opacity of it a little bit too. If you don't want, you know, your textures to be quite as intense, um, or you can, you know, duplicate it a few times and see what that does. Um, but in this case, I'm going to set my original texture layer to about 50% and the top one on screen at 100%. All right, so that's kind of a just a quick way that you guys should uh, experiment and play around with adding textures to your images just by overlaying them uh, like we did here. Now, there's a couple of other ways that you can use textures in your work, and I want to show you some of that now. Um, here, I just have this like rough, scratchy metal uh, kind of texture that I downloaded, and I want to show you guys how you can use textures to actually create um, brushes and things like that. So. I'm going to press Command J to make a copy of this, and again, add a black and white uh, adjustment layer just to desaturate it. And then I'm also going to do another levels adjustment and move it above my black and white adjustment layer. 
just to try and get some more contrast out of it like that. We want to get it as close to um, just black and white as we can. And then I'm going to hold down Shift, select these layers, and press Command E to merge them. Now, I don't really want these hard edges on my brush, so what I'm going to do is just um, press Command T to do a free transform, and that's going to show me the handles on the, you know, the center, the vertical center, and the horizontal center of my texture. And from there, I'm going to drag out these guides, and it should snap right to your textures. So if you then press Command or Control plus the semicolon key on the keyboard, you will now see where the exact center of our image is. Alright, so from there I'm going to press G on the keyboard and make sure that black is set to your foreground color. And you're going to want to select a radial gradient that fades from black to transparent. Now up here you'll see it actually goes from transparent to black and I have that's because I have this reverse box checked off which is exactly what we want. So if I uncheck it you'll see it's black to transparent but we actually want the opposite. So what I'm going to do now is click and drag from the center outward from my texture layer. All right, and that's gonna kind of, um, oops, sorry, I need a layer mask on this. Go ahead and do that. Um, so now when we click and drag from the center outwards, it's actually gonna fade out to, um, you know, a transparent, totally transparent background. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty good, I think, for now. You can duplicate it to see what it looks like. And, you know, it just kind of softens the edge a little bit. So you can do it a little bit more if you want and I'm just going to select a linear gradient now and uncheck reverse. If you just want to drag from all four sides in a little bit, uh, just to help soften that hard edge a little more, um, then that will look even better. So basically now what we have is just this black and white kind of uh, scratchy texture that, that fades out into transparency. So from here what we can do is come up to the edit menu and choose define brush preset. All right, I'm just going to call it like rough, scratchy, texture brush, hit OK. And now we can create a new document. I'll just make a standard kind of a 11 by 8 and a half. All right, and I'm just going to uh, create a new layer, fill it with black, and then reduce the opacity a little bit so we end up with this kind of gray. So it's about a 50% black on top of white. OK, I'm going to merge that together, create another new layer, and then grab my brush tool. Just hit B on the keyboard. And from there, you can press F5 to bring up your uh, brushes palette. And we're going to choose brush presets. Now, once you do that, you can scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see you have your rough, scratchy texture brush. Now, because the original source image that we used to make this brush was so large, you'll see that it says 5,000 pixels, which is huge. Okay, so we don't need a brush that big. We can reduce this down probably to like 1,000 or you know maybe 1,500 even. And now you'll see that you have um, some other options here in your brushes dialog box. You can, you know, apply shape dynamics. You can do, you know, add some more texture to it by checking this off. Um, transfer will kind of soften the, the edges a little bit. And the cool thing is that it'll give you a little preview of this in the bottom of the brushes panel. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to close that. And you can start playing around with your new brush. You know, hold down uh, the right and left bracket keys to change the size of it. And you can just kind of start clicking around. You know, you can also change the transparency of your brush, but I'm just going to kind of fill up the space here like that. All right, and that's that creates a pretty interesting looking texture. You know, and you can also change the opacity of it if you want that to be a little bit lighter or darker. Now, if we wanted to change this up a little bit, I'm just going to press Command J on the keyboard, turn off the original layer. Let's go ahead and reduce the fill to zero. So essentially right now our layer is invisible but we can kind of get a whole new texture by double clicking and bringing up our layer style dialog box and we can apply some of these effects to our texture so if I do a bevel and boss you'll see that it now kinda of looks you know very different from what we had before you can play around with the, the depth here whether you want a smooth or a hard kind of bevel uh, chisel soft and you can play around with the size of it you know depending on how uh, how recessed or, or you know, uh, it kind of looks like the, like a moon texture almost right now. Um, but you can play around with these settings as well and get, you know, very different looking textures. So, you know, you have something like that, or you have this, you know, so there's a few more ways that you can add texture to your images um, by using custom brushes and also by using custom brushes with the layer style dialog box.
All right, so you can even um, you know layer these things together. Essentially, you know, put on uh, satin, which will kind of make it a, a little bit of a darker overlay. Um, you can turn on your layer below. And again, the, the trick to make a convincing texture is to not be limiting yourself to just one layer of textures, but rather uh, building up your textures over several layers. And again, playing around with the blending modes and the settings and things like that. I hope that you guys learned something from this and, and found it helpful. If so, please give us a thumbs up, like, and uh, comment and subscribe below. And also sign up for our email list, guys, and check out the Design Better Contest. It gives you the opportunity to do a design Q&A and ask me any design-related questions you have. And also tell me what projects you're working on. And if you send me a preview or any kind of rough draft of your project, I will do a video and give you personalized tips and techniques to help you design better. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.